Wonderbirds are supported by dogfriendly.co.uk, improving the lives of dogs and their owners. Hello. Hi, guys. And can we please welcome our darling friend and co-host, Samantha Reng. Hello, darling. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. Oh, pleasure to be here. I've got my cup of tea. So as long as my bladder holds out, I'm with you for the, for the duration. <laughs> oh, oh, I can't promise the same. Dee is a chanter and she's got Buddhas behind her. And I just needed to warn you because sometimes she just goes off on her chanting. Oh, here she goes. She's off again. Okay. <laughs> what are your no. feelings about that, darling? No, 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 no D, D, don't, D, don't D. knock it. Don't knock it until you try it. It's funny enough, I had just received a four foot Buddha in our communal terrace where I live. We had a little bit of money left over to spend on some bits and bobs for our, our tenancy terrace. And one of the uh, tenants wasn't too happy on the Buddha and said that they would they would prefer a Virgin Mary. So we said, you go get your Virgin Mary. <laughs> that can be on your side. I want yeah. my bloody Buddha. But when the Buddha arrived, um, it lost its head. It got tipped on its side and it became de de decapitated. So we had to glue the Buddha back together. But I, I mean, it is bigger, it's literally bigger than me. I'm three foot nothing and the Buddha is super, super tall. So now I've got to go out every single morning and, and, and do some meditation because I, I believe it was quite expensive and it was quite a debacle getting it into the blinking terrace. So yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm all for chanting. I'm with you, T. Go chant away. Thank you, oh, darling. You, you don't know what you've just said. You don't, you don't, please don't no. encourage. No, Nobody else you don't know what you've just said. It. Thank you, know, you, Sam, darling. You are our guest this morning, and we'd love you to be a guest again. But if you want to carry on being a guest, uh, not that I'm bribing you, if you carry on again. <laughs> it's more of a it. threat Got than it. a bribe, I think. Yes. Matron, can we get these meds, please? One moment. Um, so, yeah. Who's our, who's our first guest? So uh, we actually have a first now, Sam. We have somebody who's been, it was only here a few weeks ago and he made such an impact on us and his stories were so oh. fabulous. We just said, you know what? Why don't you just come back and do part two? So this is Fraser Hines, part two. And here he is. Hello, Yay. darling. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Welcome Hi. back Hi. to our nest, darling. Welcome back. Oh, lovely. Yeah, great to be back. You're, you're looking... Face. You're looking very, very handsome. Do I? What's different very about nice. you? Oh, I've had a haircut. Ah. I've had a haircut. Oh. And I'm, wear, I'm wearing glasses. I'm wearing, wearing oh. my glasses. <laughs> the double. <laughs> how, how do you yeah, double feel? Blade. How do you feel now coming back to normality, Fraser? Has it made? Uh, how, what, did, what was the first thing you did? Make it clean. Uh, I went to the pub. I definitely went to the pub. <laughs> Good. Uh, I find I have been drinking a lot in, in lock. I don't drink when I'm working, but in lockdown, I've been drinking a lot. In fact, my doctor rang me and said, you're drinking too much, Mr. Hines, because the last urine test you gave me had an olive in it. So, <laughs> so, so no, I'm, I'm glad to be out now and uh, out and about on my bike and uh, trying to get fit because one, you stand on the scales. I mean, you're the same, you say, crikey. And I tried a suit on the other, it doesn't fit me. And I thought, crikey, I'm going to a Warner Rats meeting soon. I've got to start getting into my suits again. And I, I, I can't wait to wear a shirt and tie. Can't wait to wear a shirt and tie. Really? It's funny, isn't it? Because I was walking the other day and I saw this sort of bulge in my trousers. I thought I've never ever had it had around my waist. I've never had that spare tire. And I have one now. It's horrendous. Know. It's frightening, isn't it? And people say, oh, sorry, age phrase. You, you'll get rid of it. You think, what? Yeah, I'm going to try. <laughs> a, bit of, a bit of liposuction, I think, for me. Like, like, should, we, should we go in together? Yeah, you can get a twofer. Exercise. You can get a twofer, dear. You can get a twofer. <laughs> oh, God. What's that word, D? What's that word? Exercise. What about walking and, you know, no. bending and sit-ups? Yes. No, don't understand. I can sit up to eat more, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Or shall I say three rather big birdies? No offense, <laughs> ladies. Um, and <laughs> told me that you were once upon a time a jockey, and that's that's like such an unusual occupation. But at 
actually my father, my late father, when he was a youngster, he wasn't very academic, so he quit school when he was 14 and he trained and worked with horses and became a jockey. So again, even if I didn't have brittle bones, I'd still be tiny, tiny because he was. However, as he as he passed quite quite early on, I, I never got to hear some of the stories. One, one, one that I did learn was that um, he had a bit of a tip off and he told my uncle um to, to put a to put a bet on very quickly of course my uncle did not put the bet on and the horse won a significant amount of money so have you got any any kind of uh naughtiness or any any fun that you you would like to share that goes on behind the scenes of being well, a jockey? well talking of behind the scenes i rode my old mare excavator lady at red car once and the favorite favorite was ridden by a beautiful lady jockey called maxine carvalho she was drop dead gorgeous and she was riding a bit stallion and mine i'm riding my mare and we jumped off mine and a half race and i'm following her and she got the most wonderful sort of figure to to, to follow and i'm following her. <laughs> so we, we come inside the final th i go to overtake and my horse ducked back in again she will not pass the stallion so there's a steward's inquiry and they had me up no no Heinz, uh, inside the final third you 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 didn't overtake why did you not i said have you seen Maxine Carvalho's backside? Would you want to pass it? <laughs> <laughs> and they struck their horse out. Darling. <laughs> and they threw it out. And they th threw the steward's inquiry. And we threw it out for your cheek, Heinz. And they spluttered in their ports. And I got off. I got off of my cheek. <laughs> I love oh. that. I love That's it. Hysterical. <laughs> you also breed horses, don't you? Because a very yes. good friend of mine. Uh, did, did you know Albert Finney? Because yes. I, I knew Albert really well. And he... <clears throat> But I didn't realise you also breed horses. Yeah, he, he got me into breeding horses. Uh, watching yes. him, if an actor can do it, uh, I'll, I'll do it as well. And yeah. uh, he, he was a lovely, lovely man. I met him and we talked wow. crazy at, at Sandow. And the mayor I was telling about, excavate, I started to, I retired her from mm -hmm. racing and I started to breed from her. And she bred the winners of over 50 races. But one day I, I drove my horse box down to Newmarket. And I jumped out and the, the head stallion groom, I said, Roy, um, you know, if, if a human being doesn't feel like, you know, we can say, I'm sorry, darling, I've got a headache. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> what happens? I've driven 200 miles with my mare in the horse box, supposing the stallion just doesn't feel like it. He said, Fraser, there's just powder. I put into his breakfast, monsieur, and he <laughs> eats the breakfast. And half an hour later, argh, he's roaring like a bull. I don't know what it's Ooh. called. It tastes awful. Oh. It's all <laughs> <laughs> seriously, Fraser. Is is that what they do? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they put a little powder in it. Yeah. I think it's powdered rhinoceros horn. So if you take too much, you start chasing land. I was going to say, so, what don't... is it exactly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I Fraser, want do some. You, do you know? Did you ever meet N and Rytel when you were? Uh, oh, your... yes, loads of times. N, yeah. He and I. He now lives in, I think, France. Is it? No, he yes. lives in LA. Does he? Yeah, oh, I'm going to LA next February, so I'll, I'll look him up. I'll look him up. Yeah, look, look him up. But I know that he was, you know, you guys, a little team of you, weren't there, of, of actors who were also... Well, Davey, Davey Jones was another one. Him and I rode together at, at uh, Cheltenham in a uh, comic relief day, and he won the race. Oh. I said, I got beaten by a monkey. And afterwards, <laughs> he said, Fraser, I've got another two horses running later. I just want to give an extra. Would you ride one in the race for me? So I rode, actually rode for Davey Jones at Cheltenham in a, in a race. Wow. And he said, wow. amazing. Great. Oh, he was a lovely Darling, guy. I heard a little story about you. Not that I've ever done that, fallen asleep <laughs> as Titania in the dream. Um, but um, I heard you fell asleep during a live television show. Would you care to share that with us? Yes, it was Emergency Ward 10. Was <laughs> live. Yes, but was live. That's going from, back? Yes, going <laughs> live from Highbury. And I was playing Tim Birch, a medical student, but had fulminating ulcerative colitis. So I was being operated on by uh, John Carlyle and, and um, one of the other actors. Uh, and of course, my eyes are closed. I'm, I'm being operated on. And they're massaging my stomach and talking, talking to me. So I fell asleep. I lit the hot lights. The next thing I knew, my dresser was saying, Fraser, Fraser, what? Fraser, out, out, what are you doing? Clothes, what clothes? Take your clothes off. What, what do you mean? Take operate who you're tim birch who is you are i'm not yes put your pajamas on why because you're there's a, and the scene's coming where you're and he's putting my clothes on my pajamas taking the operate threw me onto the bed pulled the covers back, and as the red light came on uh peter madden who was playing my dad he came in hello tim i was going hello fa oh, oh fa father and 
afterwards, uh, we had a drink in the bar and Cecil Petty, who was producing and directing, he said, Fraser, I've used you a lot in a lot of things and you're not a bad actor, but that is the best acting I've ever seen. <laughs> I really felt you didn't know where you were. <laughs> I didn't have the heart to tell him, but I didn't, I was just, you know, flummoxed. I had fallen asleep. That is hysterical. Uh, methods, Absolutely methods. hysterical. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Emergency word, 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 emergency word turnout was live. I mean, how terrifying was that? Yeah. Oh, God. Well, yeah. What, 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 what was it? Uh, poor old Desmond Carrington. He had this horrible medical word to say. So he wrote in lipstick on, on the basin. So he was sort of supposed to be washing, yeah, like the, you know, whatever it was. And of course, they didn't have any water in for the rehearsals. And of course, then for the, the live show, he put water in the sink and he's talking away in German. And he went and he and he'd washed all the lipstick. <laughs> and he said, well, I think she's suffering from uh, bum till the titus. So, oh, <laughs> so yeah, whatever, because he'd washed. Well, wasn't it, wasn't but, it all those, all those shows like Play yeah. of the Day and all those things were shot live? Yes, there, there were, uh, well, all the early stuff like the Silver Sword when I was 12, 12 13 years old at Huntington. Mm -hmm. They're all live TV and you just had to get on with it. And I had a scene in the Silver Sword, <laughs> I hit my box. Get a, a mouse out, get out. Right. I had to get this <laughs> mouse out. And, and <laughs> I thought it was my yeti. I thought it was my yeti. Right. <laughs> oh, hey, doing a flash. Right. And I had to get his mouse out, and I, what, the mouse disappeared. So I had to do this and say, Here's Jimpy, my mouse. And the, the other little girl went, Where is it? I said, It's here in my hand, you know. And she <laughs> went, oh, gone. But that, that was a lovely thing about live television. I'm, I'm not frightened now, but if I do live stage, you, there's nothing, you know, you feel that if anything goes wrong in stage play, nobody dies. If a surgeon no. makes a mistake, somebody dies. Yeah. Yeah. I always say to people, True. first time to play, pantomime, you know, if you make And it happens all the time. People go wrong yeah. on stage all the time. And you just yeah. keep yeah. going, it doesn't matter, which yeah. is actually a great so lesson Fraser, to learn. What's coming, what's coming up for you now, darling? You, you do any more conventions? When can, when can we see you in London? We miss you. I, I, I'm waiting to come to London soon, but I'm going to uh, Chicago in November, New York in the 19th, and then the following weekend, Chicago. I just think it's fantastic, Fraser, that a yeah. job that you did 40 years ago yes. has, is still paying off, isn't it? I can't, I can't believe it. Uh, you know, and people often, you know, some actors go, oh, they don't want to be reminded of their early careers. I'm so proud of being Jamie and Joe Sugden. So proud because they've got me in you know, a nice house and, and you know, whatever. No, I'm very grateful. Happiness. I don't know why some actors don't, they don't like it. Apart from anything else, they get you, um, they get you with us, you see, the girls. They, I mean, they do, how yeah. else could you be with us all? <laughs> Mine, can I afford to pay for five of you for lunch? I don't know. <laughs> yes. I'm yes. only half a person. I'm only half a person. I don't eat much. It's fine. <laughs> oh. And darling, you can sell off a wing of your house. And then yeah. you can pay for lunch. Yeah, yeah. Just yes. saying. Oh, I'll, 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 get you, I'll get you some more red wine from Wines with Stories. Can I just tell you one quick, very funny story? Yes. I don't know why I woke up. I'm, I don't know why I woke up thinking about my ex-wife. And this is a uh, true story. True story. When we got married, the day after we got married, I woke up, and I went to get out of bed. She said, "Where are you going?" I said, uh, "I'm going to order breakfast." And she said, "Fraser, you can't go and have breakfast. I want you to consummate this marriage." And I said. I can't eat clear soup at this time in the morning. That's the end. True. Yes. True Thank you, Fraser. Bye. Thank you, dear. Bye. <laughs> Out and laugh. True story. True story. Bye. 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 Love, girls. Thank you. Bye. Bye. That, that is, is extraordinary. <laughs> well, I, I think actually after, after that, they, they could always be Fraser Hines part three. I mean, he he is a he's a great rabbiter, isn't he? Really. I'll say. Yeah. But moving on from that, darling, <laughs> I want to bring in our next extraordinary guest friend, colleague. She's an actress extraordinaire. She is a director. Is there nothing she doesn't do? It's really irritating. Welcome into the nest, Mina Anwar. Yay! Hey, hello, hello, darling. Hello. Hi, darling. Hello. Welcome, welcome. I know this oh. is a very busy afternoon for you because today you are launching The Importance of Being Earnest. Tell us all about yes. it, darling. So this is a produced by um, the Lawrence Buckley Theatre in Huddersfield and the Duke's Langster. And it's a kind of, it's a twist on a classic of the importance of being earnest. So it's a Northern contemporary version written by Yasmin <laughs> Khan. And the amazing thing about it is that we created it all in about four weeks. And 
I was looking at my, my cat's knocking on the door, literally. <laughs> my cat's knocking on the door. Um, uh, and then we filmed it in four days and it's like a kind of, it's set in the acting world as well. So it's got a kind of twist on it. Mm -hmm. It's my my homage to things that I've loved, like uh, which is a live studio sitcom, which to me is a perfect hybrid of theater and telly. And if in this, and in this kind of climate that we're in, where we're not allowed to direct it in the theater for live audience, and everything has to be created so that it can be filmed and put in so people can watch it. To me, that is the perfect hybrid of those two things. And think something that I've been involved in, like my whole career, you know, I've had such such privilege. You, so you filmed in a theater as well, didn't you, darling? As yeah. well as live streaming. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, so we filmed a, a <laughs> four day shooting uh, in on stage. So I used the stage like a kind of, uh, like a sound stage, if you like. So there sets were built like a soundstage in a sitcom, rather than being in conjunction with the auditorium, so that we could film it. It was filmed with two cameras. I shot 95 pages in four days, uh, <laughs> and I'm in it as well, and got some fabulous friends like you, Harriet, to ring them up and go, can you be in this thing? It's amazing. Because I wanted to litter it, not only with like theatre royalty, like Melanie Marshall, Gurjeet Singh, there's also Tom Dixon, it's got as though it was, and we've got a drag queen as well, Davina DeCampo. But also with my some of my comedy heroes like you, uh, Hugh Dennis, Sindhu V, who I love, uh, and the magnificent uh, Paul Chahidi. So, and they were some of it was done remotely, like we could film you in your fabulousness, like you are now. And then, uh, and then we had a bit of just a little bit of rehearsal and just did it, we recorded it remotely. How do they get hold of it to dine? They can. And how long does it uh, run for? You can go on uh, the importance of being earnest.com and it's available from today um, till the 4th of May. So you get a ticket, how it works is if you've never watched something in the in the comfort of your own slippers, you can get a, a ticket, it says £12 and, it's, and it goes towards the both of those theatres because we're still trying to support the arts and save a lot of theatres who've had no money. Um, and then you've got 48 hours to watch that link. You know, I, I got really excited when you opened your mouth, and I mean that with love, because I realised that you're both <laughs> from... It is. Well, <laughs> it is. It's your, be your radiant beauty. <laughs> it, but, it's that, but it's your accent. I can already hear my accent getting thicker as I listen to you. We are Lancashire lasses, so I feel like yes. we just big up the Northwest massive. Yes, definitely. Um, but, I, you know, to be honest, one of my biggest challenges and bugbears uh, being a disabled uh, artist is, is the fact that, you know, a lot of barriers are in my way um, and a lot of non-disabled artists play disabled roles. So I, I'm very open about saying that until there's an equal, equal playing field, don't mm. take roles away from already marginalised um, um, oh, Absolutely, actors, yes. You know? And I suppose you coming from the Northwest, um, I found that, you know, even coming from there, it was the opportunity to act growing up. I didn't even know where, where a, a acting school was. I only heard about the ones down south. And being, mm. you know, a, a woman from a, 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 I suppose, a marginalised background, how, how do you feel about that? And what, how can we, we challenge that? Do we need to get quotas? You know, how can we encourage more broadcasters, more theatres to be a bit more conscious about bringing everyone together and, and, and giving more opportunities to, to you know, that, that young North, Northwest kid that is told, now nah, you're not going to make it because yeah. you're working Well, I class. kind of, it's they're really interesting. I mean, they, and to me, that's, they're, they're not even like new questions. That To me, I've lived and breathed that my whole career. And this last month, March, is my 30th year in the industry. And I bear in mind that I was the first Northern Asian woman at my drama school and it's a really famous drama school and before that there had not been one and that was in 1991 training in acting and musical theatre so I mean it's an extraordinary thing like I've always said is that if you have the skill set and you have the confidence to be able to interpret that that your artistry to anyone it should be an absolute open playing field I am I'm as much northern I was born and bred in the northwest in Accrington I am, my narrative is Northern. My other narrative is being Asian. Uh, and my other narrative is being woman, you know, and or any other, but they're not, they're narratives to me. They're not boxes, but they mm. also, you can like look at who you are. And I don't think that anyone should represent everybody. Like, I don't think you should represent all disabled people. And I certainly don't represent all Asians. And I don't certainly don't represent all people of 
the north or working class that's another demographic that kind of gets lost and that is not represented enough but i think unless there is more representation in the upper echelons of people making programs producing them directing them you know creating content then you're never going to have people having a conversation with your cultural context and there should be someone mm. who represents all of that cultural context if you want to do something that is about that narrative. Otherwise, Absolutely. it's not oh, really that, 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 that was that was honestly that was so lovely to listen to. It really so was. It was, brilliant. It was so concise and brilliant. But I think Absolutely. Is that what you You're said, right. Um, I'm sorry to jump in on this, but but what you did say, and I was thinking, well, the most important thing here is look how difficult it's been. Just, just being a woman that, without everything else yeah. coming in on top. I, I'm just, I was just about to say that woman of a certain age, the parts. You know, we're, we're all, we've all got that thing, but yeah. obviously Samantha's a bit younger than us, darling. I'm bitter you, to say it, oh, but yeah. well, I know. No, yes, I you are much younger. Of, I, don't, I, I don't even think of a certain age. I think no, just yeah. being a woman. I hate that phrase as well. But I it's all those things, thing. isn't it? I literally got a breakdown the other day, um, saying, literally saying oh that's all right because such and such a man is older he could be going out with a, a woman of a certain age and I went what are you talking about yeah said, that now, can't you just say what age group you want and then just let people in like I'm all I'm right. 51 now 51 I, I never get 51 year old parts by uh, you know because got good genes and my mom was from India you know so that's really good you look but fantastic you just, but what's interesting is you got but I am 51, so I am I am that. I'm not pretending to be that. So why <laughs> can't you have somebody that is 51 in your program that doesn't wear a cardigan or has like, you know, <laughs> exactly. in a corner, not <laughs> yourself this yeah, sure. Meanwhile, I'm sure we've all had it. I have it all the time. People say to me, oh, you, you, you know, you can't, you, you can't go up to that part because you're not old. And you say, but I am that age. Do I have to prove it to you? We don't walk down the street with a thing over our head saying how old we are. I've got to say that you have put that so brilliantly, um, as I've never heard before, actually, I have to say, to, to commend you on that. I mean, to, to me, that is absolutely so fabulous the way you've said that. And also, talking about the skill set, you have got the skill set, okay, to die for, because you've, you've done so many amazing things and still yeah. doing, like directing, acting, mm -hmm. musical theatre, you know, writing, I mean, it's extraordinary and, and you're so inspirational in every way. Thank you. And Dani, tell me, is there anything that you love doing more than anything else or do you love all of it or what do I you love, think? Uh, I love, I'm very much, like I was saying, I'm very much in the moment. So yeah. I, I'm always, I, I'm amazed myself at sometimes at my own bravery and courage to take on <laughs> massive things. I started directing professionally when I was 50 and I directed a musical and choreographed the whole musical. And I trained as in contemporary dance uh, 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 when I was younger, when I was doing my A-levels. And I loved, I love dance. I love, I do a lot of physical theatre. I love being able to create characters with physical kind of psychological gesturing. So to do a whole musical and be given, given that to do and direct it, you, wow. do, I, you do sit there and go, is that something I can do? And then you do it and you go, wow, I didn't even know that was something I could do. Mina, I want to ask you now, tell me about The Worst Witch because I know you're going to be impressed. I know I'm going to impress you more than you've ever been impressed, possibly. Yes. That in the original version of The Worst Witch, yes. my kids were so impressed. They used to go to school saying, my mummy's in this. And do you know who I played? Who? The Miss cat. Mark. The cats! <laughs> oh my god! Everyone, I just love that the the, the cats and we had like real cats because I was in the second this revamp and the second series and Jill, the writer, had actually written this character Miss Mold. So I was played like an art teacher witch who had the most I think spectacular entrance of any character I've ever played ever, <laughs> where she appeared as a block of stone and then like morphed out of this stone, like out of this clay, because she was this like hippie kind of mad art teacher witch who had a, like a hidden agenda. Uh, and if you've not watched it, it's brilliant. Her journey was like fabulous throughout. But of all the things, when people just go, oh, I think of all the things I've done in life, the kids programs I've done, 
like the Sarah Jane Adventures, which is like the 10th, 10th year today of, of Liz, Liz Sladen uh, passing away. Well, that's today, actually. It's an extraordinary day today, 19th of April. And all the kids stuff. And also, you know, when you grow up and then those kids grow up and they go, oh, my God, I used to watch you in such and such. And I love being able to give that back. Do you know and our previous guest? Amazing. Our, our previous guest today was Fraser Hines. Oh, I love Fraser Hines. He was just on just before you. How very weird. <laughs> Did he talk about the menopause? <laughs> he did. <laughs> Constantly, actually. He's very boring talking about that. But uh, yeah. but no, I, I love Liz Sladen as well. She was an amazing woman. Yeah. And today is like really, it, it's an extraordinary day today because it's 10 years since she passed. Uh, and I still get lots and lots of people who commemorate today. She was an absolute inspirational woman. And uh, I do, I've been around a lot of inspirational women, actually, in, in my career. And I know, like, Harriet, when we did the vagina monologues where we met, you know, that was an extraordinary amount of people, women, came through that. It's uh, an extraordinary, you know, it was an extraordinary piece to create yeah. something that was not taking the piss out of anything, were women's exactly. voices. Well, literally. And it wasn't... And it wasn't and it wasn't um, anti-male either. It was very no. important. It was about celebratory truth. And it was <laughs> we had an amazing time doing that. And I remember what, because we were at the arts, weren't we? We were barefoot. Yeah. We were, we were things like, and so, yeah. apparently someone came to the box office and went, so this is vagina monologues, right, right. Look, not like a theatre person at all. Came in and left halfway through and went, but there weren't any vaginas in it. <laughs> <laughs> And he thought, because it was in Soho, that we were some kind of porn thing going on in the corner. <gasps> it was well oh, no. Three women with no shoes on, dressed in black, <laughs> talking. How boring was that, right? Well, listen, Nina, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you thank so you. much for doing our secret thing that we did yesterday which we yes. can't talk about yet because it's not but Mina you've been wonderful and a fantastic sport and I, I can't wait to actually touch you in real life oh one day we'll all hug I know I can't even hug <laughs> yes Harry at the end of her magnificence and Harriet's magnificence in this piece is just a joy to be I'll honest. pay you later darling thank right. you thank you Mina <laughs> thank you, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, darling enjoy bye. Bye, bye darling bye what an amazing oh, day we've had Sam in We've had amazing oh. guests. I feel set up for this evening now. I do. <laughs> Thank you for having me. But I You're have to gorgeous. eat myself as well because the cats started trying to eat one another, making loud noises. <laughs> quite with you there. And, and darling, before you go, keep chanting. Well, huh? oh, yes, okay. We have Joe McKeldry. Yes. Oh. Exciting. We'll see, we'll see you then. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. No, 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 no chanting, Dean. No chanting. No chanting. No, no don't oh. chant. Don't chant. Oh.